this is um, uh, Ken Figueredo speaking. Uh, I'm the moderator and will be uh, opening up the session on uh, the business of uh, IoT. And uh, we have uh, Alicia Asin from uh, Libellium uh, joining me in this uh, panel session. Uh, she will be talking a little bit about um, kinks in handling this uh, session. Um, so very briefly, uh, what I will do is open up the panel session and talk about uh, what are the business challenges in the IoT market uh, based on what I'm seeing and my work. Uh, we'll then have a, a presentation from Alicia uh, with Libellium, very much a, a market leader and uh, able to provide lots of uh, expertise and experience of this market. Uh, and then we'll take that on to a discussion uh, which uh, will hopefully focus on the implications uh, both for suppliers uh, and users of uh, IoT solutions. So very briefly, um, uh, let me open up by talking about the business challenge of commercially commercializing uh, IoT opportunities. Uh, we, we see lots of uh, material written and lots of uh, wonderful diagrams about market opportunities for IoT. Uh, I have this very simple visual with uh, a number of uh, um, uh, boxes for the different types of connected uh, devices and sensors. Um, and they can be categorized in terms of um, industry verticals. So you could think of the yellow ones as all being uh, automotive and the green ones as being utilities. Uh, or you could take a different perspective of the market and look at places. Uh, such as smart cities or homes or transport hubs. Um, and there's a third perspective, which is uh, consumer appliances and uh, uh, personal devices. The challenge for companies is to bring their sales, sales funnel uh, to focus on this market because it's very demanding to go after each and every opportunity. And so the first step is uh, opportunity capture, which segments, uh, depending on how you define the segments, uh, do you uh, go after. Having uh, trained your sales funnel, then it's a matter of uh, converting the opportunity. What, it is, what is it that a company has that's special? Uh, does it have to partner with other companies um, for selling or in terms of delivering the solution? And once the opportunity has been converted, how do you help companies uh, that want to uh, embrace the IoT uh, create new sources of value. So there's a, there's a process of new value innovation. And these are all business challenges that you meet when you start to uh, focus on the IoT uh, market. The IoT uh, will also introduce uh, new service concepts um, and uh, platform requirements. And what I'm showing here is uh, a set of connected devices and sensors. Uh, these are all managed via some kind of a platform. Um, and uh, devices are connected via networks. They may be fixed networks, uh, mobile networks, uh, satellite, uh, uh, local area networks. Uh, and for illustrative purposes, I'm showing uh, a geographic dimension. So you have region one and region two. And one type of IoT service uh, could involve uh, the same category of devices. So you may have uh, a set of vehicles, for example, uh, that you want to manage, but these vehicles are served by different platforms on different networks. And that's one of the complexities that uh, IoT is, is going to bring to the supply side of the industry. Um, a different type of uh, concept is one where you're using um, non-related types of uh, sensors and devices. So in a smart city, you may have, um, let's say the blue ones are uh, parking stations, and the green ones may be vehicles. Uh, you may have yellow ones, which are sensors on public transport systems. Uh, and what you're trying to do is deliver an IoT service using data from different types of uh, connected device. And so where this takes us is, is the issue of business IoT services uh, are going to have an impact on the value chain. And they're also going to drive business model innovation. So in this uh, scenario, uh, let's consider a home automation service with its own value chain. Uh, and at the bottom, we may have a, a device or a module uh, supplier uh, connecting to um, a network provider. There may be a systems integrator, uh, a, a service provider, and a distribution channel partner, all involved in delivering that home automation service. 
And in a smart home, you may have uh, something replicated for a smart meter service and also something uh, else for a, an assisted living service. And um, these may all exist uh, quite independently of one another. Uh, but there are tremendous opportunities if you start to use um, sensors and data from across uh, those different uh, verticals. And so in an IoT scenario, what's likely to happen is um, some sort of consolidation of the value chain. And here, uh, what I'm illustrating is a horizontal platform uh, that helps you with that cross-silo aggregation. Or uh, they may be over the top um, uh, IoT uh, service providers that take data from the connected devices in each of the silos and uh, apply that data to deliver new IoT services to to customers. So IoT is presenting a, a lot of new challenges and, and what I want to do now is, is move on to um, a presentation from Alicia uh, to get a practitioner's view of what's going on in the market uh, and then after that we'll move into uh, uh, a QA and a session. So let me hand it over to you Alicia now. Thanks for your introduction Ken. Um, Thanks everyone for being here today and happy IoT Day to, to everyone. I think that the fact that we have an online event all across the world is just another evidence of the potential of the IoT and connectivity. So starting with the, with the vision that we have about the IoT, I think that this picture uh, explains it by itself. Uh, we are talking about a new world full of sensors and, and a new world that has all absolutely all the verticals impacted by the by the IoT. So we can be talking about controlling forest fire detection, enhancing the wine quality, measuring the 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 water quality, but also going in into more industrial applications or detecting free parking spots, detecting the air quality in the air. So I mean absolutely everything. So that said, that was the vision we had with Libellion seven years ago when we started the business. Um, the way that we are addressing this is by solving the big problem of interoperability that relies on the Internet of Things. So in the slide before, I've been showing a, a world full of sensors. So it means that we need to make all kinds of sensors talk to any cloud platforms that are already in the market by using all the existing protocols. And that interoperability problem is exactly the problem that we are solving with the, with the WASMOD platform. So we are sending any sensor data using any communication protocol to any cloud platform. And that's the basis of, uh, of, uh, of Livellion and what we've been doing in, in the past years. So I'm going to talk about three main facts that we've seen in the in the IoT because we were we've been in the in the market since 2006 so very early and uh, far before the the hype so first fact is that opportunities are coming also from other verticals and markets i want to to remark here that there are many in many discussions there's uh, always the the point of saying well there's so many pilots, but who is making money with the real money with the IoT? Well, those are three different projects. I haven't displayed on the first slide, but are also but are real projects. The first one is the um, ArduSat project, which is the first open hardware satellite on the space, and it's using our radiation sensors. Second one is uh, an old project, one of the first ones we, we address, and WASMODs are being used to monitor stress levels in koalas as well. And the last one is a device that was done um, using our, our prototyping technology to monitor early symptoms of pneumonia in newborns. So what I'm saying here is that there are so many opportunities that we are not even able to be aware of all of them yet. The second one is that the market is difficult to forecast. If you are familiar to the Garner hype cycles, I've just um, overlapped all the 
hype cycles that in the past years containing the, um, the terms WSN, M2M, and IoT. And as you can see, the first time that the term WSN appeared, it was in 2005, and it was close to the slope of enlightenment. That means mm, it was expected to go mainstream in two to five years. And if you look at the picture, uh, next, next year, they forecasted that it was not going to be in five years, it was going to be more than ten years. And the forecasting has remained as more than ten years in the, um, um, so far till, ne till past year. So all that said, market analysts are saying that 2014 is, is going to be the year of the, of the IoT. So let's, let's see how this 2014 uh, ends. And finally, this is um, an interesting point of view. We have a very horizontal platform. As, you, uh, as, as I told, we integrate any kind of sensor, and we have integrated so far more than 72. So when we started with the platform, we say, well, if we start with 20 sensors in a couple of months, or probably like a year, we will see something like a um, Gauss bell, and we will identify very quickly those um, emerging markets going faster. It wasn't like that. So, so far, that's the, um, the um, sensors sold in 2013 by Livellion. And as you can see, we are not meeting Pareto law yet. So we are far from a Gauss bell. And as you can see, 37% of the references are bought in the 80% of the cases. That means customers are are still doing a little bit of everything. So the market is too fragmented yet. All that said, uh, I want to give a positive, uh, a positive note. And it's, well, it's true that uh, although it's difficult and early to, to forecast the, the fastest markets growing, we can identify two main markets that are going faster than the other ones. The first one is smart cities. And it's natural because we have uh, cities that need to go more efficient, and we can we can improve their their processes in many ways, from optimizing the waste collection routes to monitor the the environmental pollution in the cities, improve the the life quality of the citizens by helping them to to find parking spots easily and as a result reducing the amount of the carbon footprint of the of the city and also the, the noise. And we can also go to more commercial applications in cities like detecting the hotter zones, like um, helping tourists to um, guiding them to go to the main attractions in the city and uh, detecting where people are in after uh, celebrations of matches and, and a number of, of different applications. And the second one is the agriculture. And that's, that looks interesting because we are putting the, the edge technology into the, um, into the most ancient market in the, in the world, which is agriculture. And, and it, it's working very well. So here we have some deployments. We have in in the U.S., in Australia, and also in the north of Spain, where we are monitoring an, a number of parameters like soil moisture, temperature moist, uh, te uh, soil temperature. Um, we are using wine veins, pluviometers, and leaf wetness sensors to basically forecast illnesses so that agriculturers can reduce the amount of fertilizers they are using and not using them at all if not needed and even improving or sometimes even customizing the 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 kind of wine that they want to produce so uh, a very dynamic sector as well so as a final conclusion i would say that this is the this is the future that we envision, but um, and obviously it's not here yet, but it's going to be very 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 close. Thank you, Ken. That's great. Thank you very much, uh, Alicia. And um, we are uh, going to go into a brief uh, d discussion um, uh, session here. And 
Let me begin by asking you, um, in, in reference to the the Gartner hype cycle, you talked about uh, M2M and IoT in a number of different terms. Uh, do, do you have a uh, do, do you have a clear definition that you use to uh, to define the IoT market? I think that IoT is the umbrella term that groups absolutely all the rest things and wireless sensor networks, M2M and smart cities and all the things. And for me, the basic term for the IoT is connecting everything to the internet so that we can uh, improve process and and behave uh, accordingly. So okay. with that basic term, then you, you make all the rest. Okay. Uh, can you... Um Describe for us a little bit of what um, Libellium offers, uh, and 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 also how, in, in relative terms, uh, you know, how you uh, uh, earn your revenues. Uh, I mean, is it product sales? Is it uh, uh, licensing? Um, uh, do you help companies with a lot of uh, transfer of expertise or systems integration? Uh, you know, what are the big uh, um, you know, sources of revenue for your company? Well, we are. Um Actually, we have developed two main things. The first one is the, the hardware and the, the, the hardware platform of Wasmod and Meslion as the, as the internet way for Wasmod. And the second one is the APIs that are inside and are the big value of those, of those um, devices because they allow developers to do whatever they want to do in, in, and adapt to any specific IoT project. So APIs are open source, and the way that we are uh, right now monetizing them is by selling, selling them inside the pieces of hardware. So basically, it's um, the revenues come from, from selling hardware, and in a, little, uh, in a little part, by providing services like training courses to our customers to help them to really master how to program with our APIs, Sometimes we offer them um, this, uh, the service of programming ourselves, the devices, because sometimes we can, of course, get a, a better tune of the, of the platform. But that's, and, and that's pretty much. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, now, you talked about uh, starting the company seven years ago. That, uh, that, that's old in terms of... Uh, uh, you know, IoT companies. Uh, it would be interesting, and, and and I know that there are a lot of people and companies interested in uh, in entering the market or developing a position in the market. Um, can, can you talk a little bit about the highlights? Uh, how did your company evolve? Uh, what were some of the key business decisions uh, that you made? Uh, you know, what went right? What went wrong? Okay. Well, we decided to do um, the what look like uh, the difficult way to go because we decided to be a hardware company and seven years ago being in the hardware business was not sexy now you mm -hmm. have a lot of companies in the in doing hardware devices and that's like the the new uh, sexiest thing in the in the tech world but it wasn't and we didn't take any money from investors because we wanted we had a very uh, clear vision of that we should have uh, we should be horizontal and by that uh, by that time many of the um, of the mentors and investors we were talking to were uh, only interested in in vertical companies that were going to mm -hmm. be covered from hardware to the to providing the service especially uh, focus on on providing the service so that was one big milestone for us, not, decided not to start with investors, to, to be horizontal. Um, what do you mean, can you clarify what you mean by being horizontal? I mean that we are addressing absolutely all the markets. So seven years ago we said, well, it's going to be difficult to forecast which market is going to be faster and which, which is going to be the winner and, and the right place to be. And when you are a startup, you can afford to make any bad decision because you are totally dead. So we said, well, instead of trying to provide a water product with a water application or a parking product, let's try to create a platform 
that can attach any kind of sensor so that we can make agriculture, water, parking, smart cities, industrial projects. And the, the trade-off with that is that when you are horizontal and, we, and you, you are addressing absolutely all the verticals in the industry, you can get closer to the, uh, to the end user. So we just decided that we, we would use the channel of other companies like system integrators, carrier, or engineering companies to enter okay. our products. Okay. And so what, what would you say were the big milestones in the last um, um, six or seven years? Well, a big milestone was the release of WASMOD in 2009. Um, it was after almost three years of, of development inside, inside Livellion. And, and that was the, big, the, big, uh, uh, the first step for Livellion. After that, um, there was another milestone that was the creation of Cooking Hacks website. And that was because we realized that makers, and we realized that again before uh, everyone was forecasting that makers were going to play uh, a very big role in the IoT. So we just realized that we needed a new brand for approaching that market and we created Cooking Hacks and my colleagues will be, will be uh, later uh, talking here as well so I, I, I won't go into, into okay. that. Basically to address that market. So that was a milestone in the meaning of uh, being able to address both industrial and consumer uh, and maker IoT waves. Um, in the past years, we've been basically growing our product ecosystem. And for us, it means adding more and more sensors to our platform. And recently, we released a new, uh, a new, a new suite of water quality sensors for, for WASMOD. And, and also in monitor, uh, connect, um, connectivity protocols, adding more, uh, adding more connectivity options. We started only with Zigbee, and now we have Wi-Fi, RFID, uh, cellular, like uh, GPRS or 3G, and, and also Bluetooth. Okay. And, and also the cloud platforms, like Exida, ThingWorks, or Esri. Okay, I see, I see. You have quite an impressive uh, list of uh, partners when uh, you know when looking at your website. Um, can you tell tell us a little bit about how you work with partners and uh, you know what are the challenges in supporting it? Because uh, I'm guessing you are smaller than a lot of the uh, large partners you have. Well, it's, it's everything is a challenge, and and of course. Uh, partnering with other with other companies is um, is always challenging because it's uh, it, it's it means open your innovation process uh, and outside your control and and you can control sometimes timings interests and many things but uh, we are uh, an ecosystem uh, company and that's in our DNA so that's absolutely necessary and everyone in the organization understands that. So with that in mind, uh, I have to say that in all our partnerships, we've, we've been lucky enough to find the right people that really wanted to push the solution that we were mm -hmm. putting together. And that was a, a plus. And the biggest partnership we've done um, was with IBM for releasing Mold Runner. And that was the result of a two-year collaboration. So it was a long time dealing with a huge organization like IBM and and I have to say that it was it was challenging but it was very educative and and all the people involved were always really wanting to to move things forward so that's always that always helps. Uh, are you noticing that uh, large companies, whether uh, they want to supply the IoT market or, or large companies that want to uh, adopt some of these IoT technologies, uh, have they learned enough about the market and, and are the decision cycles shorter now? Uh, how do they know? Well, I think that we've seen that 
big companies have been just listening to the market and being educated. And I mean, going to the dozens of conferences that we have about the IoT and also by learning from the existing pilots of smaller companies, what were the results, what were the, the outcomes and, and the challenges as well. And, and now I would say that we are in a, in a different moment where mm -hmm. we have the big companies have already identified that this is going to be a real market and they are really serious. And you can see that mm, the biggest companies, we have uh, the Smart Planet Initiative in IBM, you have new divisions for IoT, specific divisions for IoT in Intel or Cisco, uh, GE a partnership with Quirky, the Google acquisition of Nest. So all those things are really so in the market that the bigger players are ready to go and are just really serious about this market now. Oh, that's that's very positive. Um, what um, what advice would you give to companies that are um, on the cusp of uh, entering the market? So you know, this may be other companies that want to supply or or maybe uh, you know some large enterprises that want to integrate IoT into their. Uh, their devices or their sensors. Well, what advice would you give? I would advise them to try to be as as a standard as possible, and that's um, that's a, a big challenge. And there are some of organizations trying to create standards around the IoT right now. But the thing is that when you are in tech, uh, either you are absolutely the winner and you have uh, um, the technology that it's going to be adopted or you will be uh, required to to adapt to the existing ones. And in the past seven years we've been seeing, uh, we've seen that um, SIGBI was the leader technology for the IoT, and then it was not that clear because sometimes carriers prefer cellular or Wi-Fi technologies, and now Bluetooth low energy is, is really um, uh, looking like an interesting uh, alternative. So it means technologies Go, goes always fast and being too attached to a, one single technology it's going to be probably a big risk for a company starting. Okay, okay. I um, have just been passed a question from the audience. Uh, you may have covered a little bit of this earlier on but let me uh, put the question to you. Uh, somebody uh, said, uh, I noticed on your website that you are working with IBM and their uh, Motrunner SDK. Uh, would you describe that integration in more detail and when that partnership happened? Yeah, well, as I was explaining, IBM wanted to create um, a, a very ambitious project consisting on uh, an SDK for uh, an SDK, a new operating system. Six low, uh, address the six low pan protocol and also make a simulator of uh, of uh, wireless sensor networks. So the first thing to say to make a simulator it's uh, that you need to model in a specific hardware platform. So two years ago, IBM was serving and screening the market for the, for picking the right technology to to model in their in their simulator, and they decided that it was going to be Wasmo. Because again, the modularity and the horizontal approach, and because we we have in our mind to expand the platform to the new technologies to come. So the result was released in last October, and and that's through a development kit that we are that we are marketing through our website, and it basically contains the required hardware for connect for creating wireless sensor networks using six low pan um, protocol and also the required software containing the SDK, the operating system and the simulator for the network. Okay, thank you for that. Now I know uh, you were pressed for time uh, earlier on and, and we've uh, run over the, the, the song you had so I'll uh, uh, stop there and thank you very much. Uh, if you have any other final comment you'd like to make, um, but if not, uh, thank you very much and I think we have uh, um, some follow-up material from Rebellion that uh, the organizer are going to um, uh, present now.
Okay, well, thank you very much for, for inviting me today. Thank you. Very good. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, you too. And, uh, Trevor, let me pass it back to you um, because I believe you have a, a video you want to show now. Yes, I uh, want to say first thanks, uh, Ken and Alicia. That uh, it was a great panel and a good way to end the uh, the whole uh, event with. Um, I think we're actually going to we're running to the very maximum on our Google Hangout time. They limit us to eight hours. So, Ken, do you want to kind of add anything to the end here, and then uh, I'll wrap up. Uh, just do a little concluding thing. And, um, I'll make sure to link out to that RGSAT video um, from my Libellium and Alicia uh, on the website so everyone can, can see some of that and some of the, uh, see how some of this hardware actually gets implemented by the community. So, well, I don't have much to add beyond uh, congratulating you and the team for, uh, for organizing the event. Uh, I know that there's been a, a, a lot of good content presented through the day and and I hope uh, the audience have, uh, have learned from it. Yeah, it's been uh, really good. And on behalf of Eclipse, it's been um, Eclipse and Postscapes. Um, we appreciate all the panelists coming out and all the viewers taking part. Um, we'll be sure to follow up those that had slides during the presentation. We'll be linking those on IoT Live. And we also have one more session. It's another panel um, that will be starting at 4.15 Eastern. So. Um, links can be found also on IoT Live. So um, happy IoT Day, everyone, and looking forward to doing this again. So, Thank thanks, you. Ken.